Welcome to SimScale training on data analysis. My name is Pavel Sosnowski and I will have the pleasure of being your host today. Let's jump in and begin. We start with an introduction to post-processing. The first thing to understand is what is a result itself and how is it represented. In general, our geometries, our results, are stored with a representation that is just a bunch of numbers, rows of data, which are prescribed to the mesh. The mesh itself is a discretization of space into little boxes, little squares, little control volumes. The interesting thing is that inside each of those control volumes we'll have one specific point that will describe the behavior of the field inside the whole thing. In structural mechanics, this point will be the point of the mesh, so the intersection of uh, the, the mesh itself, whereas for fluid mechanics it is a centroid inside the mesh. And all the values, all the properties of the system are stored within that point. In fact, the results outside of that point do not exist. In order to understand what is happening at a particular point inside the mesh, the one that I'm trying to point here, to do that we'll need to interpolate the values that are stored inside the centroids of the mesh. For fluid mechanics or for structural mechanics, inside the edges of our geometry. There is no solution over there, just an interpolation of the results. When we are trying to work with the data, we will be converting the result of large amounts of these numbers to an understandable format that can be further used for interpretation. We'll extract the data, process it, and manipulate it so that later on it shows us a behavior which can result in understanding and making engineering decisions based on what we're seeing. Having a huge chunk of numbers, columns and columns of hundreds of thousands of things, most of the time does not bear enough information or is over complex for our brain to, to handle. That's why we will be making a certain simplifications or representations with the post-processing, for example, applied in PowerView. We'll be focusing today on graphical representation, making images and visualizations. Further, what we can also do is create graphs, extract point data, and so on and so forth. In the end, the whole goal is to represent it in such a way that, it that from this huge chunk of numbers and columns, we'll be able to see the reality that is happening behind the simulation, the process that has evolved in it. In order to do that, we'll be using a tool. We always need a tool to, do, to perform this kind of actions. And our choice will be Paraview, the Parallel Visualization Application, which is an open source toolkit for scientific uh, data processing. And it's getting more and more recognition within the industry itself, just because it's based on a unique approach that allows for customization, can be easily automated, and has a highly scalable uh, possibility, highly scalable nature itself. These are just some examples of possible visualizations, neural networks, some bone transplants, fluid mechanics, or even protein connections or protein modeling. The general principle based on taking the source that is the data itself and filtering it in order to reduce the complexity of the whole system. There will be different filters applied and we can filter a filter so that in the end the complexity will be reduced from the big chunk to a smaller portion 
that is more understandable and further simplified to a level that allows us to comprehend what is going on on the screen. How can we use it and how can we get Paraview uh, to work for us? There are two ways. We can either go on simscale.com and use the online post processor since Paraview itself is the engine used behind the post processor that is uh, available on the platform. And the second approach, obviously, is to download the application and use it locally on your computer. I would like to thank you for participating in this post-processing webinar. Until next time, bye-bye.